please welcome Director Brian Buckley, Andrew Peters, Barclay Abdi, Thank you. So, congratulations. I, I was uh, just saying uh, a minute ago how much um, how much humor there was that I wasn't necessarily expecting, and it really gives the film such energy. And I'm curious to know a little bit about what this book, <laughs> what the, you know, how much of that is directly from the book, um, and uh, uh, how important that was for you in terms of uh, setting the tone for what the story was going to be. I'm sure this. I'm good at working. First of all, you guys have exams. You know, on, uh, tomorrow's first day. We heard it was like a Spielberg exam going on tomorrow, so we're very concerned for a lot of you. Um, the uh, um, yeah, humor. It's interesting. Um, the number one. I, I worked up in. I worked for UNACR and did a short doc uh, up in Kakuma in Kenya. Uh, before I made this and before I had made this other film. Um, and it was a little short film that they wanted us to sort of get inside a refugee camp and then show the value of refugee. And, um, and they, we spent a couple weeks there. And so you have different factions, you know, the Somalis were there, and the Sudanese were there, the Egyptians, etc. There was all these different factions inside the camp. And without question, you know, the Somalis were coming in and there was all this horrible stuff going on over there at the time. And um, uh, they, you know, in Al-Shabaab and the South, um, so some brutal attacks, uh, the famine, the piracy, they obviously didn't talk much about that, but they would come into the camps by the thousands. And the one thing that we found was we were shooting them, you know, my producers here now tonight, um, that we were doing, uh, it was that they were the nicest people, they were survivors, and humor was at the core of the Somali. Like, it was so clear. And you're like, whoa, wow, you guys just don't hold up ships and, you know, you know carry AK-47s around, because that's all we see in the media. Like, we just see tragedy or terrorism, et cetera. So that part um, really came through very quickly and then the BBC was covering the story, or the doc at the same time, they actually you and double booked the doc. And I showed up looking like this, and that wasn't very good for like the doc. <laughs> anyway, um, they, they got better footage. Um, so they, but they were telling us that they couldn't get in there, they couldn't get into Somalia, and all this stuff, and you're like, wow, and then we made this doc, and so it stuck with me. So now when the book, what happens later on, um, we had the, uh, the book, uh, we shot, we failed miserably at the short uh, for the doc. Uh, the doc, like no one saw, like 1,500 people saw it online and, and it was a disaster. So then it was like, God, you know, there's such an important message. We've got to talk about refugees, we've got to talk about the Somalis, we've got to talk about, you know, real students, whatever, that the fact is refugees are stuck in these camps for 17 years um, and they can't get out. And so I was reading about how um, in Somalia at the time, you know, the, the UN workers were getting attacked by Al-Shabaab and their food was getting in there. And I was like, God, there's all this more heavy stuff. And our doc has failed. So I said, I'm going to go make a short that's going to go outside the system. Because the UN has a certain system and they can only do so much in UNHCR. And we create a narrative. The narrative, we used refugees as actors. We created the same story, but this time we did it as a story and they became actors. Once they become actors, then people would glom on and think there was talent there. The talent would translate into something. So that's how I sort of got on the road of that. Humor, adding that into Jay's book, was the research book that I found and, and uh, that was the only book that was available. It's a very long-winded answer. But the, but the bottom line is his book came along. He was the only guy that was in Somalia. This is all true. And there was absurdity in his story, and he has humor, but we injected more into that and felt that ultimately to make this movie accessible, that it can't be telling the story the same way we've seen it 100,000 times, not 100,000, but it needs to have an accessibility. Humor adds dimension to a person, and it was very important, I thought, that we had that in this, so. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Evan, tell us a little bit about 
uh, what drew you to, to the story. It's, uh, it's a very physically demanding one, um, <laughs> uh, and it's a, but it's a very a very good role. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to know how you landed on it and what you what your pr approach was. Um. <clears throat> Well, I just, I, uh, I met with Brian, and obviously he's very passionate about all this, and uh, he's a great talker. So I thought, uh, uh, <laughs> he swayed me immediately. Um, you know, he said, let's go make a movie about Somalis, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go do this. Let's, sh let's shed a new light on them, and, and show their humor, and I, you know, thought we were making a comedy. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of waxy, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, and and I never, I it was it was a chance for me to step outside of my comfort zone and and go out and go to Africa and meet Somalis and work with people who had never acted before and also work with great people who had acted before, Orkhad and Al Pacino and and. and yeah, it was just it was just gonna be a huge learning experience for me, and uh, and I read Jay's book and it's very boring. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> it's just factual and, and but it is enlightening. So uh, it was informative, you know, the facts. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that's you know, and Brian told me that as well. He goes, "We're gonna make a you know, it's gonna be a fun movie. It's gonna be." Great, and, and I really liked the script, and I thought it was funny, and, uh, and I wanted to be a part of it. So that was that was really why I go on. So the, 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 the that's kind of fascinating to to take a his, basically historical research and inject humor into it. Um, tell us, I guess, about about the decision to uh, to then have uh, Jay as a as a narrator for the film because that obviously sets the tone immediately. Yeah, I mean. I mean, once we, the book, if you read the book, and, and he, I think Evan's done an excellent job of setting up the book so a lot of guys are around by it. Um, the, uh, you know, the amazing part about the book is that, aside from it, it is a very, it is very serious and very detailed sort of everything you need to know about pirates and even democracy in his mind. It's, it's incredible, right? The first 20 pages, Evan writes about, about uh, Evan. Jay, Jay writes about himself. He doesn't write about himself. And then when you're reading the book, you're like, wait, 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 stop. Like, the guy's like 20 years old. He's like running over to Somalia. This is crazy, crazy story. So that's the part that got me so excited. I was like, wow, this guy's insane. He wrote this book, and he doesn't even see himself as the subject book. Like, he could have written that in a completely different book. But he's so committed to Somalia, so committed to telling the truth, so committed to journalism, all, all these things. It was amazing. Um, and that that had to be applauded. And then, you know, ultimately I took and did an interview with him. The girlfriend thing came out, the Marianne thing came out. A lot of these things came out in this interview. I said, like, he came up, um, ironically, he was, um, we used the plane ticket that he was, that end meeting, he was just had met, he was done a CIA meeting, and we used their plane ticket. He came up to Toronto and did the interview with him there in Toronto before he flew back on, on the government. So I want to thank them. And, uh, and so, but that interview, he was really sick, he was on cough medicine, it was almost like truth serum, he just opened up and said all these things he wouldn't normally have said. And he said, well, I, he, later on he even watched the movie, he said, wow, I said that? And I go, yeah, you did, we had it on tape. And now it's in a film. And so that, that part of it, like humor, you start to see the other side of it, and he does have kind of a, a sense of humor, dry, a dry sense of humor, and then we injected more. But but it's really, to me, like, in the like, barcode, you know, like, uh, humor and love and passion, like, they, again, it's very, very important to get the fully formed thing. Like, it's like, we were so very afraid, like, you say humor, Somalia, you guys are really fucked up. Like you say humor in Somalia, people get like, we can't put humor onto that poster anywhere. It's like, oh my God, we say humor, people are gonna run us out of town. You have to say it's drama, which it is. It's a fully formed character and humor is part of that. Absolutely, yeah. it's not one yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, uh, Barca, tell us a little bit about, um, 
I guess when you read, came across this script, yeah. you know, how important was it for you that it be, you know, have these things in it uh, since you, you spent, you know, a good part of your childhood in Somalia? Well, it, well thank you for having me, first of all. <laughs> he is the best man. I need to. Um, but um, you, it was very really important you know, to mention those stars because that's it's part of our culture and you know it's what we grow up in. No matter how bad the situation is, you always have to come out with humor and you know to make the mood you know lighter. And did, um, I mean, having Barca as part of the the cast, uh, were there certain things that you know you, you two could sort of rely on each other to to uh, I guess in some cases maybe also help with with a lot of the other a lot of the other cast members, the smaller cast members, in terms of uh, helping to. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some first time actors in the film, uh, sort of working with them and making sure that the, the culture is authentically represented. Of course, um, you have to help each other, you know, it's a um, fellow actor at the end of it. <laughs> we have to, um, and Evan knows this, <laughs> we have to help each other and so everything can come out looking good. You know, if you be selfish, you know, you won't get far. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we had started, you know, Evan and I, you know, we had that first meeting and I remember we couldn't even find each other for that first meeting. Yeah, very difficult. Very difficult each week. Once we did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> but anyway, we, you know, it's going to be an experience, a journey. So we got on the journey, get to get, we, he worked with everyone, you know, you know obviously you look at someone like Al, who's like very experienced. We meanwhile, you know, we're simultaneously training, finding the talent. So all the, all the actors, primarily in uh, in South Africa, we found them all, um, except for being Barkhan, um, and in a community that our acting community that definitely wasn't any larger than this room, and they weren't actors. There were people working. There were some people who were part time. Like I might try acting, finding them in the streets, training them for a couple months, having them audition and then workshopping them, et cetera. That's all how they, they all came with Marianne, the Marianne character, uh, was that, um, and, or uh, the Colonel, first time actor, you know. Um, and then Barcods was like a savior, because obviously I knew, you know, obviously what he had done in Captain Phillips, but it was interesting, because he did this interview on uh, Conan, which he was on tonight, <laughs> um, and Conan, and it was so funny. I'm like, wow, this guy's got such a humor. He's not just gonna like, you know, go crazy on us. And so like we used him. We said like, this, this this could be the guy. Send the script to him. Maybe he'll do this thing. And then Barkar became a very instrumental part of the whole process because he would go into the community and help work with these actors. And remember, we had to write the the script was written in English, but then there was a whole Somali portion which there's no really no subtitles. Barkar translators. It was a, a beautiful process, really, of making that work. And then, and then we we wanted the audience to sit back, and, and even, you know, Evan and I are sitting back going, I don't know how they're saying, I hope it's accurate, you know, because they needed to nail those lines. It had to be completely authentic, and Barker, of course, was, the, was critical in that. So in essence, we shot that movie, t you know, like dialogue twice over, you know, with, with translations <laughs> and what Barker would do, and then Evan's sort of performance against that was really interesting. Yeah, actually, talk a little bit about that, Evan. What, the, I guess the, the, the sort of um, the fact that you're also outside of being able to understand the, the, the language around you, uh, how does that help you in, in building the performance? Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it helped. It, it, it helped a lot because I didn't know what they were saying, and, and, and I don't think Jay knew a lot of what they were saying. So Barkhide translated everything for me. Everything. And he did, did a little bit of English. So, you, you know, we could get by a little bit, but I think really Barkhide was just, I mean, just playing the role of the, the translator beautifully. So, yeah, I, I could not have done that without Barkhide, but it did make me feel, you know, it, it, it gave me that sort of, well, I guess, the fish out of water thing, you know, but, uh, yeah, just being totally in over my head and not knowing what I was doing or where I was going, and, and it helped with fear a lot because, uh, 
you know, they have AK-47s, and, and I don't know what they're saying, and I'm, you know, they're, they're, they're yelling, and they're getting worked up, and I'm like, what's going on, what's going on, I don't know what's going on, and, and he's like, we're telling a joke. <laughs> uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. So it was, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, it's, it was, it was, it, I, I dove head into something that I just did caught. I did caught. I did caught. It's very bitter. It dries your mouth. Pretty gross. Uh, you have to chew it for a really long time to get high. <laughs> It's it's really nice that the two of you as as, <laughs> as as colleagues are working together in a way that mirrors the character relationships in the film. Um, tell us, I guess, uh, how that works with you know um, uh, when you're actually. I guess uh, Brian, you can elaborate a little bit on some of the things that you had to do in the workshop process to get some of the other actors to, to really should be comfortable in, in their roles in front of the camera. Evan, yeah, you take this one. No, <laughs> no yeah, we did, actually we did work, the workshop part was like, it was the first element of just getting people on with translators and before Evan, before you guys got in, and then we did table reads, a lot of them. Yeah, we worked, we, our, we, yeah, we read pretty much all the scenes, but we didn't overwork anything because we didn't want it to be all stale. So, um, but yeah, I'm not sure. What, what did you do with the friend? Well, we did. We had, we went out and and we would work for like basically there were two series. It was like we cast for a while. We'd have everybody originally just do. Uh, when we found the people, we didn't do any line reads. We initially uh, just had them sort of talk interviews on camera. And then we brought them, once we got to the callback situation, then we started handing them line reads. And this was based on a side, this other film that I worked on, or we worked on, that we found that worked really well. And then the next step after that was, okay, you've got the part, and now we're going to go into a cafeteria, and we're going to work every day on these parts. Um, and uh, it was... It was like Sabrina, it was funny, I remember when she was like, I haven't seen Team America yet, you know, and like, I remember her going like, yeah, it was really funny, and like, you know, because actually that was based on a true story about this other film, the Somali film I had done, where the main female character digested only American films, and all her pop culture was based on, everything she knew was based on films, and Black Hawk Down was her lesson, she said, if you're going to go make a feature, she said, talk about Black Hawk Down, you can say it, but... So you, you're sort of like learning as you're going, you're hearing this stuff and you're writing it in and you're working with this. And then the big thing was like, you know, that was the other thing, oh, this is funny, uh, the workshop, the thumbs up. Because I had read on work Wikipedia, I had written the script, and Wikipedia, they said thumbs up's really bad as a Like it's a really bad thing. So I'm like, all right, they had it in the movie, it was a really bad thing, like do not have thumbs up. And uh, I walked into this session, everybody was there, all the smiles were there, and they're just like, man, they're all laughing at you about one thing. I go, what? The thumbs up. That doesn't mean anything. It like, means thumbs up. I'm like, wow, oh, like, anything. you know? I'm like, all right, I really like that joke, though, but maybe we can make that work. You know, and talk to them and sort of how, and, and again, misconception, Wikipedia has this in there as a bad thing, and, you know, again, working with these workshops, it remains true to that. Well, it's, there is that sort of, reflexive moment where she's talking about cinema and you know no, no Somali actors were cast in the film um, so I'm curious a little bit about your your photography your Africa unit was in South Africa the whole time or was there any I, I didn't get a chance yeah to two there's two separate units you know we brought over our uh, line producer AD yeah. so if you're obviously not shooting Somalia what are the key things uh, that you needed to get right in terms of the I mean, because there's obviously plenty of many, many differences between Somalia and South Africa. So, uh, tell us a, a little bit of how you approach that. Um, you know, and also work on what things that you may have noticed that that really needed to be uh, done just right to, to represent Somalia. All right, I keep on hogging this. I feel really bad now. Yeah, go for it. All right, fine. I'll take it. All right. So, um, so the uh, the 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 part of the, um, authenticity was critical. So his book obviously was one L. We had shot a short down there. We did this film called The Sock. And we shot it down there. And his book was the record. Um, 
The community that we worked within down in South Africa was all Somali, so there's a hundred percent Somalis. The big, the one of the trickier parts, um, and, uh, that um, was going into a South African community, which um, was tricky in terms of bringing Somalis into South uh, into the South African kind of poor areas and making sure that everyone gets along, you know, um, and. That uh, that was an element, but it it was more about like you know my production designer, um, yeah, David Skinner, uh, friended a bunch, tons of Somalis. They'd go out and have them go out, and you could do this too for reference. So, friend people, and then they go out and they shoot pictures of their neighborhoods, this street, this thing, and then we used all that for reference because there was no reference, you know, and we actually just used that, and he had all these friends that were over there that were kind of helping us piece together the areas of the town that we were in. So everything remained authentic. The Somalis, well, they, you know, they are, you know, we, very, they're not going to let anything not, like Barkad, you know, amongst them, is never going to let me do something that wasn't true to the culture, like that would, we just wouldn't let it happen. Like they'd say something, Brian. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way that's supposed to look like. That doesn't look authentic. You know? yeah. How they react to something. It's like really interesting. Like when um, Evan and uh, he's in the truck and he goes down to the water to you know sort of face that big moment. The pirates and they're about to go on the ship, and they're like these. The generals are like you know colonels giving hugs, and this is all authentic. That's how they agree each other even if there's a sort of adversarial situation which isn't the, like the normal way we would. It's authentic to that moment. So I wouldn't touch that as a director, just let that play out. I mean, it's not what I would do, you know, um, but that's what would happen. And like I said, then Evan comes out of the truck and how that played out. You you just totally ran in that moment too, which I love. Like he just how he sort of entered in and that all became a very real thing, you know. Burkhard, were there any, was there anything in particular that you can think of uh, that really did need to be adjusted? Um, honestly, um, as far as the script goes, it was just, you know, much better than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Syracuse, so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad, you know. <laughs> What about the food? What about the food? Was well, the food was like, was the bananas, bananas at the bananas. Food. You said we would have oh. bananas. You can eat bananas. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? We always said we need bananas. We need bananas. We need bananas. We have to eat the bananas. That's nice. Oh my God, where's the bananas? How many bananas? Like, like, you need to eat that sugary dish. You remember that? Eating that sugar. Yes, it's a Somali sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He ate about 20 pieces of that. <laughs> I got sick. I got sick. That was that scene. That was so funny. It was great. It wasn't done right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, tell us quickly about um, the, the animation sequences. Uh, it's a really inspired way to tell some of the story. Well, I mean, the whole movie, it, it really is supposed to be like, this is, a, you're in Jay's head, right? It's his telling of this tale, right? So um, the animation to me was sort of an interesting way to kind of climb into his head. Um, and the, you know, obviously this is the Biggie video, which I just thought was sort of interesting. Again, like, you know, pop culture um, sort of permeates, you know, these cultures we don't know about. I mean, that we have no knowledge about, yet they could tell you everything. You know, the Obama whole thing was based on my translator in, in um, Kukuma. Anyway, so it's all this stuff's realistic. So the animation to me, getting into the head, uh, I thought was really important in making that entertaining. The gorillas, at that point to me, were in 08, were like the thing. So this is sort of very gorilla sort of influenced video, which Jay would obviously have been into them. And they were sort of a dominant um, group at the time. So I thought like, oh, that'd be interesting to sort of his gorilla's take on, on this world and let that sort of be fun Japanese sort of animation. Um, and take you through like the shorthand of piracy, so we could get that without having to watch, you know, necessarily watch, a, you know, old piracy documentary or film, another film. And then the second one, 
Um, once we started working on that first one, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. I and it brought in the second. There's really three segments. There's the flight. We, you know, goose that up, uh, the trip. And then, of course, the first one was always in the script, which was the one out of the TV. And then the third one, it just felt like we needed one more. And that was sort of going in his head in the room uh, and the bullet. And, uh, and you know, obviously, a, a Captain Phillips sort of reference in there um, that just thought was interesting and, and sort of, again, played with the mind. There's only violence. Do two gunshots in the whole movie, both of them are in his head. They didn't really happen because they didn't really happen to Jay, and I wanted to be very true to his experience over there, not add to the, uh, the paranoia of, of the public about Somalis. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so I'll take our next question in a sec, but I, I want to ask one thing about working with Al Pacino, um, because obviously uh, this is a legendary actor. Um, Evan, you have an incredible amount of experience, and I'm curious if, well, I mean, for, you've done a lot. <laughs> so, um, tell us a little bit about uh, working with Al, if there's things that, um, you know, that you feel like uh, his process helped you out just as an actor, and what's like to direct Al Pacino, what, what sort of direction can you can you give someone at that point in their career? I mean, just, I guess, uh, uh, what's it like to, to work with him? <laughs> uh, no, Al's, Al's incredible. He's, uh, he's, how old is he now? He's 70s. 70s, yeah. Yeah, but he still, he still cares just as much. And he was, <clears throat> one thing that I did pick up from him, which Sarah Paulson kind of does too, but we it, it's that thing where you you, know, you do it and we did about three takes and then uh, I mean, one time Brian was like, alright, that's fine, that's, that's fine, let's move up. And then all of us was trying to do a bad one, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so so then, uh, then he's like, let's do one more, let's do one more. So then the whole time we were shooting with him, he would always just want one more. And I thought that was really cool and I agreed with that, I was like, fuck you. I want one more too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, so after working with him, and that was in the beginning of the shoot, the rest of the shoot, I always be like, just do one more. Just do one more. more. There's only one time where I couldn't do one more, and that was on the plane. We were right. like, he's like, we're not going to make the deck if we can't do one more. Like, one more? Right. <laughs> yeah, because you wanted to fall asleep for real. Like, you were doing the death of that. Right. You had to fall on the character. Right. Oh my God, the sun's going down. He actually has the ball. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. He, was, really good. he was really in the. It was very much in the moment. It was. It, it, it's. It was really. It's interesting watching you and what actually the three of you guys because you all have very different methods, you know. And Al, to me, watching you two work together and then watching you work with Bark, I was it was awesome. I mean, because that is part of what this is, the spectrum of acting, you know, whether it's somebody who's just starting out and, and you know, Sabrina to, to these guys and to, Bar uh, to Al. But that one extra take thing was, yeah, it was, it was really inspiring because it was like 10 degrees out and he'd want to do one more. Um, great, like his blocking, he'd figure out your blocking for you. And like he would sit there and have thought about it a lot. And, you know, whether it was the down, let's use the example, like, downstairs, where he's like, um, I said, all right, gonna have you, you can do what you want to do, Al, down here by the poster. So I just want to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And I start mumbling to myself. And he's just like, mumbling. And, and, then we get, and then he's like, I need, you know, we need a, you know what's, the, what's that last line? Maybe we need a better one. Like, literally, like, he's sitting there, you know, um, thinking. And... To care, I mean, it's so inspiring. I mean, all you guys, a lot of you guys are starting out that everything matters. Because at the end of the day, when you film, what you learn is like, well, I shot that shot, that's it. There's not another one, and it's in the film, and it's locked, right? You can make mistakes, you can take risks, but at the end of the day, if you don't get it, you don't get it, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's like uh, that process of the people that are on this film, I can tell you, the dedication to that to that crap, and we didn't have it, we wouldn't move, you know, we'd sit around and try to get it, you know, unless it was like that one day, but you actually ramped it up to craziness at that point, and it was really, really mad that 
moment when he grabbed the girl and started kissing her stuff. So. Yeah, but but it was like he was in the moment, <laughs> and but he was inten- you were there. Like it was a mental thing, and like that dedication for all of us. Like because you're stuck with it, and you don't forget that. Like, you're shooting and the lights bad. You're fucking freezing. You're you're this. You're that. You know all these bitches. Like oh my god, everyone's like you gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. Remember. Get the fucking shot. You got to get. You got to get. You can never go back. You can't go back. <laughs> and then he goes to the critics and wow, that was awful. You know, like yeah. it's true. You know, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah, Spielberg test tomorrow. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants to kick, kick things off for the audience? Yeah. I have just a general question. Um, how long did it take you to film? I mean, you put so much heart, soul, authenticity into it. So. How long did it take you? Well, I mean, if, if Evan didn't draw, draw out asking for one extra take, it would go a lot faster. Um, but no, it was 29 days. Yes? Um, for both actors, how do you think this, um, this like, movie's like, journey, how did it impact in your, your skills and experience as an actor? That's a good question. I, I very good, very good question. <laughs> huh, Brian? <Okay. laughs> All right. Well, anyways, what I think, I, I think, I think after seeing the film, I was, uh, you know, sometimes what you think you're doing, you're not doing, and also uh, movies are made in the editing room, and I think that was something that I now. You now have a better grasp of is that you like like you said you go to like, try anything it doesn't matter you know even if it's wrong just try it who cares it's not you know they can cut it out and and, and you're trying to do a perfect take the way you want it it'll never happen like and you can try it you can maybe get there but then the next take you have to do something completely different you can't imitate what you were trying to do before or even trying to do better what you were doing before you just have to do something different and something authentic and something in that moment. And also learning from Al, going back to your Al question, it was like, yeah, um, there's no difference between action and cut. Like, he would just maintain a seamless flow of Al Pacino. <laughs> so it wasn't like action that he's like on. You know, it was like he was just chilling his action and then he'd just come do his thing. <laughs> which was great. I mean, that was, that was you know, what I heard about Brando from Robert Duvall, which was like such a cool thing to hear and to remember and to try to incorporate and also, you know, ask for one more. If you don't feel good about it, if the director's not quite happy, kind of chase that and go after that and, and try to get what you want out of it. Yeah. With me, uh, this movie was, thank you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but with me, this, this movie, um, it was uh, something different that I had done before. So, um, you know, it was just pushing my limits in a lot of ways and, you know, working on my craft. So I think it was a good experience and I had a great time working with this studio and then the rest of the guys. Or I got crushed it. Yes. The old budget question. <laughs> <What's> the budget? <laughs> no one knows the budget. I don't know what the budget was. Let's just say. 400? It was an over. <laughs> it was less than Captain Phillips. Um, yeah, you're never supposed to mention the budget. Someone's told me that. Don't ever mention the budget. So I can't mention the budget. Um, but um, what was the second question? I'll take that. 1.5. I like that. 1.5. 1.7. Do we have 1.7? 1. 1.7. 1. 1.7 going twice. Okay, we have to do 1.8. We got 1.8. We got 1.8. No, it's too late. You've already bid your hands up. Thank you. Yes? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the script. Script. Script came super fast. Yeah, yeah. Once you have the book, like, if you write from... It was really, you know... It was great because there was a beginning, middle, end of the book. It was just kind of moving stuff around um, and doing the interview. But I don't know. I'm going to say it was like the core script was 40 days. 
and uh, and then because you because you know like you'd write something that's completely out of your brain and you're like there forever going well that's terrible but this thing is like well Jay lived it I gotta kind of move that card over here and then I'll write to this but it went pretty quickly yeah but you made some really bold decisions in the adaptation what had what, I mean was Jay involved at any point uh, down the line did you, did you read the script did you watch the film yet um, yeah yeah all that you know he um, he. He, we, I sent him the script, or you know, me and all my producer, me and Jure, who worked his ass off, and Matt Lefebvre, who was here. Where's Matt? All right, these guys deserve a lot of credit. Um, worked with Jay, we'd give him scripts going back and forth, and um, we, he had to approve everything, yeah. Uh, his whole thing was just, um, what was it? Don't, like, they don't, yeah, his family is obviously a little protective of his family and his brother, but we basically cut the movie. Um, so, but but the but that that element of it, uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty straight you know pretty straightforward uh, regarding uh, his approval process. When we showed him the movie, which was in New York, uh, and he also came to set, and he also did a cameo in the movie. Um, that um, which was interesting when he came there. You want to answer that? Alright, so tell me about the tell me about the point where <laughs> but um you know he came to set, which is interesting. And uh, then when he saw the movie he actually got a little yeah, it was in the middle of the day, so he got drunk. And had uh, because he's working with an organization, he could, he's still in Africa, he's still in Somalia, he's in here in the US now, going back over there, he's still doing all sorts of stuff for the good positive things, not for the bad guys. Um, and he um, he would, he sat down and watched the movie and he just kind of was shocked, you know, but, uh, you know, he, he kept on saying it was authentic, you know, he said, I don't know, maybe funnier than I am, I think he said that, um, but, uh, but he's, you know, he's obviously, yeah, but, you know, pretty good guy to have fun in you, I'd say. Um, so he, I don't want to say that, even after you insulted me tonight, I still do. Um, but, um, it's, it's. Yeah, I don't know, it was very positive, it couldn't be more positive experience with him, because the last thing you want to do, I, I was have, I would think, if you do an adaptation of someone's life who you admire, what he did, is have him turn around and go, that's not my life, and I don't, I'm not that person, and I, that story is not the story. I'm curious also about uh, Abdi, is that uh, based on real person, yeah. it's not a composite of a... It's a really, he really, had a translator did all that with him, and he really got run out of town there. It was two parts, really. He was back and forth twice, and that's why I combined that into one trip. He really did get published based on the Captain Phillips interview, if that was all true. Um, the uh, Abdi, was, his personality was based on me and our nice translator, and the Obama, had, the whole nine yards was the translator we had that took us through the camps in, uh, in Kenya. And that, and that was who I formed a character around himself. Yes. Um, kind of going off of this conversation about Jay, Evan, what was it like? Did you have any sort of interaction with him, or what was it like preparing for a role of someone that's currently in existence? Yeah, I did. I did talk to him, and we skyped a little bit. He was in Nairobi at the time, and uh, I read his book, and I, I watched some videos of him online, uh, online and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. We kind of came to the conclusion that. <laughs> I don't know, Jay kind of talks like this, and he kind of just like, <laughs> doing his thing, and It's <laughs> cool. But I don't know, I, 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 I just kind of wanted to do it. I, I figured, you know, it is a real story, but it's also you know, dramatized and, and everything. And I, you know, when I read the script, you know, it was very funny, so I wanted to make him kind of silly and bring him to the to, to Somali. The, the whole fish out of water thing, you know, I think is always funny and as, as the whole thing, you know, you kind of go in and you're like, oh God, what's going to happen? Am I going to die? Am I going to get killed? Everything. And then it all kind of works out. And I don't get killed. You know, I, I learn something. I'm kind of enlightened. And, and, and then I try to enlighten other people with what I've learned. So uh, I kind of just went into it with that and, and kind of got rid of the whole idea. You know, it wasn't like, like I was playing Lincoln or anything, so it didn't have that much to live up to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> itself dictated a lot, you know, as far as what his world was. Um, my personal experience, the, the news element, um, you know, that news coverage wasn't being accurate to our portrayal of the culture um, is, you know, that was really important to me, like to sort of hit that note and to, to because Jay himself, you know, became a sort of island there and was going there on his own. As far as the culture, once he got in there, it was being accurate to his, literally to the book. Because I couldn't possibly, like the danger would be for me to start cherry picking stuff that, you know, wasn't accurate to what the book was. So I kind of stated, what, what would drive the drama? What were the interesting story beats of the book? Because you have to kind of pull those out, you know, as you're, as you're looking at the book. And, okay, this is interesting, that's interesting. And then sort of dramatize around the president, uh, him going there to meet him, was phenomenal. Did I take that story as far as, you know, elaborate, the, the actual subject matter that was talked about in the meeting was exactly what the president said. No, the tape recorder did go up. No, those other things didn't happen. But, you know, that, that's the uh, element of drama added to it, but I wanted to make sure that no one, Jay again, wouldn't look at that later or make a joke of something very, very, very serious, which was the you know, case of no schools and where their position was. And so making sure that that message landed. You know, the, the message of a misunderstood place was certainly something in my heart because it is. I mean, we're you know, getting on, you know, obviously a serious note, which is, which is the Supreme Court decision that just went down uh, yesterday and uh, travel ban. And it's like, you know, our job as filmmakers, because there's two ways to go back, you can make a documentary, which is great, and obviously, you know, very, people have very, you know, they've never been arguably more popular than they are now, but the problem is we keep on talking to ourselves. So, like, because we're all in agreement, like, this is a fucked up thing, and we'll see a doc, and, yeah, that's really fucked up. And watch another doc, that's really fucked up. But what you gotta do is, like, you gotta get it to the, a ticket to the part of the country, the world, that are not watching docs and are not seeing this and get something in front of them that sort of opens their mind. That was sort of back goal for me because I kept on seeing that because, you know, I had that first-hand experience with my first doc, which is no one watched it. I was like, oh, you know, how do you get these core messages that are pretty simple into a movie that's more digestible for a larger audience? There's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's not like you're selling out. You're actually trying to avoid what's going on now, you know, in my mind. The most challenging part about making this film, in terms of especially the story and what you want to do. Well, I mean, in all honesty, I financed the movie, so no one wanted to give us money for it. Um, so the um, no one's no one's really interested in making movies about that side of Somalia. Unfortunately, that's the greatest challenge. Um, it's if you look at different cultures, you're going to run into that every single time. It's like, oh, you know, like, really? You know, can we blow something up here? You know, can someone die? I mean, that sort of thing is a cliche, but it's true. So to get to the other side, the challenge is to create this film that we are here today, talking about, okay, if I was, you know, you can go and, you know, again, a lot of you guys are film students, you're going to go in and pitch a story and go, okay, it's a Somali film, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, it's going to be a comedy, and it's like, what? Excuse me? Stop, stop, stop. Do you say comedy? Like a comedic element, that's not going to fly. And you know, unless you're doing Book of Mormon or something, it's very difficult to go and say you're going to do that. So the challenges are to find guys like this, you know, Al included in that. You know, each one of these, guys, the talent is everything. You can't survive without the talent. I mean, it's everything. Getting them to read the script, to meet with you and decide to do. It. I was so I can't tell you how happy I was. When you know you guys are again making movies, you're like, oh my god, they like read the script. Again, read it. 
We paid him a lot. Okay, but what? It's like, okay, he's not going to read it. Just give him money. You know? Um, no, but in all honesty, like, that part is the... It's a community. It's this thing. So the answer is, it, every step along the way is a challenge. Getting the talent is a big challenge. Getting the financing is always going to be a challenge. Yeah. Yes. Have, have you shown this film in Somalia? Are you planning to? Um, oh, there's plans to show it in Somalia. Um, Barker, did you smuggle any tapes over there? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it will probably, you know, end up in some, I mean, I'd love to, um, the, uh, yes, so the answer is I hope, yes, for sure, that we'll get there uh, in front of a large Somali audience. How about, so, Barkhad, you're, you've uh, lived in Minnesota for a while. Mm -hmm. Has it played to the Somali audiences there? Uh, no. <laughs> Hopefully this, this Friday. Yeah. Are you opening Nationwide on Friday? Yeah. yeah. Nationwide, and so it's, yeah, theaters, there's like 10 markets, and then, you know, Netflix and DTV, you know, places, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. You talked about this a little bit, but, like, while you were directing or acting, how did you make sure that, like, any particular scene didn't, like, delve too far into comedy or too far into drama and kind of maintain, like, a confident tone in between? Yeah, I mean, we, we caught, it was tough. It was super, super hard. It was so hard. That's the hardest part of this. And um, it's a dangerous place to be, you know, especially on stuff that's this heavy and this important. Um, is there a sign? I mean, it's your gut, you know. And then sometimes in the edit, we cut a lot of the funny out later, you know. Um, you just... Uh, so is there a specific scene that you worked on really hard to kind of get the tone right? <sighs> uh, like for, for, okay, the end scene with Marianne, like that was sort of, you know, there was, when he shows up in the room, you know, and like it's a pretty big, big moment, and uh, he keeps in, injecting, you know, Canadian jokes into, you know, he's going to die you know, right there, you know. When she comes into yeah. the room? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because that had that a lot of It worked, yeah. I mean, it was a balance, though. And we tried taking out, believe it or not, at one point, one edit, I looked at getting rid of the Canadian jokes, and I'm like, wow, that sucks. You know, like it, <laughs> you, you missed it because you expected that beat to land. It had, it could not be in there. You couldn't be too true to who Jay's character was, you know. Can you think of a scene that was like, or a that scene we did the first pirate, I think, was was always an important one. But then I was always like, oh god, I would play this. I don't know what to do. It was like it was <clears throat> daunting, but because it's like you know the fear of is this guy going to kill you, and then, it, then you got the Canadian jokes, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then yeah, I don't uh, yeah, it was just, yeah there was a wee joke in there, and yeah, it's it was, it was just a lot of stuff in there, but. But that to me was like it was always, that was always the tone of it. It was just so it was just it was that was the challenge was to have that tone, but then not have it be not real, I guess. Which I'm not sure we did, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, you cut a lot of the stuff out of it that made it not Yeah, I mean you just that made it too goofy. Yeah. Yeah, you had to. You just yeah, yeah. You see it in the edit. Sometimes you're shooting, you don't see it. You just cut around it. But um, um, is that completely a process with with you and your editor, or do you also rely on being it in front of you yeah, know yeah. other audiences while you're while you're working on it? Yeah, I mean Tom Hanks. Yeah, he got his art, and he just he figured it. Uh, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. I do actually believe you got to screen it for people like that tone stuff. You know. And sometimes, like you, you have to just go on what your gut is, um, but you know, and everyone's always there's always certain beats if you screen stuff for audiences, and that oh, the first act's too slow, or this is that. Now, actually, the biggest challenge with that first act, which is sort of oh, it's the prototypical guy, you know, someone living in home going nowhere movie, you know, into yeah. suddenly the gears change and you're in Somalia, you know, like it the movie changes. You know, um, and there's another massive tone change in the plane. Obviously, that whole scene's kind of crazy, and then it sort of settles back down into something. 
But it's like shock and awe, like that gunshot scene, everything was like one of those things where it was important to sort of set fear into the audience that this could actually happen. So you just suddenly the movies become, oh, it's moved into something else here. And now the idea is that fear through music tension performances that these guys gave, that you think something's gonna happen. You've been pre-programmed by the media, pre-programmed by our, everything around us, that some shit's gonna, for sure, is gonna happen to this guy. And it doesn't, like, but we keep you on the edge. That's the performance, that's the music, that's the edit, that's everything that sort of drives, in your true, like, media sort of manipulating into thinking something's gonna happen, because it has to, and you're a small man, you know, it's, it's gonna happen, you know, for sure. Can we take maybe a couple of final questions? Yes. And then we'll come back to you. So she's, she's asking about is sort of moving between different genres uh, from American Horror Story to working on this. Uh, tell us also as, as an actor, like, how you, how you can be full-time on a TV show and also work in a, a film that's on location in Africa. Like, what is that experience like? Uh, well, <clears throat> well, Horror Story only shoots about five months out of the year. And that shows all, that shows all over the place. That shows, it's scary, it's comedy, it's drama, you're crying, and then next minute you're telling some crazy weird joke or something, so, uh, yeah, there's that, and then, but this movie was, was its own, its own thing, and I really, um, I just love the character, I love the story, I love the arc, I love, I love all the changes he went through, um, I love all the stress, um, and so, it's all kind of interesting stuff to play. So I tried to do that as much as I could and sort of dive in that way. And I think the most challenging thing was the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, that beard, I was ready to rip it off my face <laughs> so many times. Um, but I guess it added to the uh, insanity and the anger and the, uh, and the stress of it all, so. Um, yeah, it was, it was, I think it's the same thing, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, I don't know, I try to, I, you try to always make it as, as well, I was going to say as, as real as possible, but I, some, of, some of the stuff I did was really silly, but, your question, so, anyway, I'm going to put the microphone down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll take both of you to wrap up. You first. Uh, uh, my question for Margaret. Um, what was it like for you to work in two movies that their stories are so different? Well, it was good. You know, I like this story. It's, it's kind of finishes the other one. It's, um, it goes deep to, you know, the Somalia and how things really is there. So. You know, it was really good for a lot of people that didn't understand, you know, what's the motivation, and what this whole thing, what it's about, and you know, how people live in there, it's stuff like that. So with this movie, you know, we go back and you see a different, something that you didn't see, you know, the other film, Captain Phillips, it's just one incident that happened to certain people, you know, so but this one is, um, I think, you know, it shows a um, wider vision of it. I know that the movie was filmed in South Africa and you mentioned that a lot of the actors in you were from South Africa so I was wondering what steps you took to sort of make sure that the culture was authentically Somali and that you could just sort of group several African cultures together and that you took the steps to make sure it was specific to the, the steps you took to make sure it was specific to the Somali people oh yeah um, well it was real simple um, we went there's a huge refugee, you know, so in South Africa is an open border country, so if you can get South Africa and you're from Somalia, you, once you're in, you're entering, you're not into like Kenya where you're inside of a prison basically. So the communities they settled into in Cape Town, or specifically Somali communities, you know, there's an elder 
there who sort of oversees it and you have to get the script to them, my producers again, you know, Matt would get the script to the other, that, that person would then deal with the casting and make sure that that is a, basically has to get approved through their system. Um, and <laughs> the funny thing is it, it's a community, like I said, it's like everyone knows everyone. So there's like, it's, if you try to bring somebody who wasn't Somali onto that, into that role, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Not mainly because the, the, the actions, the culture, the language, the way it sings song, the, all these little nuances, there's no way you know that you would fit into this world. It, it, it's very specific. So, and once you're there and you know it, then it's it's very clear and that's, you know, and, and um, but we would have to shoot, you know, for instance, in uh, you know a community that was South African. Xenophobia was, you know, the first time we did the movie, it was horrible. It was, it, you know, there was Somalis getting burnt, little, many killed, even when we, as we were shooting in the areas we were shooting because there was so much anger about the refugees coming in. So there's a lot of that sort of tension. So you had to be very mindful of even that point, making sure that that community knows that they're, you know. The, the, everyone can mingle, everything's going to be okay, everyone's going to get paid, that sort of thing. But So the detail um, it was, in essence, easy once the story... I I if you were making a negative story, I think it'd be a lot more difficult. Um, but a positive story, I think it was a, it was such... I mean, honestly, such a beautiful experience. I mean, like, it's the best way to sum it up, you know. So you open on Friday, uh, and do you know where in L.A. we can tell people to go? Is there a particular screening that you want to uh, help steer audiences to? Yeah, it was a yeah, sunset, right? Arena sunset. Arena sunset. The arena sunset? Or the arena and the sunset? No. Oh, the arena cine lounge, the one that's that's by the CNN building? Right. Yeah. 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 The one that's by Amoeba. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So okay. Great. Tell your friends. Yeah, you know, we have all the answers to a couple tests sitting there. <laughs> I can't say which tests yet. But. Is anyone in the Spielberg class? <laughs> you are? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us.